Welcome to the 2019-2020 Winter Outlook. I'm Press of Atlantic City Meteorologist Joe Martucci. After speaking with long-range forecasters, as well as adding my own South Jersey weather knowledge, I am pleased to offer you this Winter Outlook. And all season long, you can follow me online, Facebook and Instagram at Joe Martwx, Twitter at AC Press Martucci, or our website at thepressofac.com slash weather. So what we're going to do is go back to last winter and see how we did here. We said that December would be calmer and milder. Milder it was, calmer it mostly was. We had that expressway special on December 5th where some places saw over six inches of snow. Then we were looking for an active late January into early March timeframe. We did have that chilly temperatures, but changeable. That's what we said. Temperatures were above average though. However, in our climate changing world, we don't see too many years below average anymore. And then we called for big storm potential. We did not see that, but we had plenty of events where South Jersey saw the majority of the snow where the northern half of the state did not. Let's take a look at our winter statistics. There's a little bit of a difference between the shore and the mainland. A little bit less snow at the shore. Now these stats are all for the mainland at Atlantic City International Airport. Ten years ago, the most snow in a season. We'll see if we can get up to there this time around. The least snow, 0.4 inches of snow. And down in Cape May, there have been a couple of winters where there hasn't been any snow throughout the winter. Largest two-day event that usually covers our snowstorms, 20 inches of snow, and that happened twice. So without further ado, let's take a look at our winter thoughts for this winter. A couple factors at play. The El Nino Southern Oscillation. Those are the waters off the coast of South America at the equatorial Pacific. Cooler than average temperatures, then you have a La Nina. Warmer than average temperatures, and El Nino. Then we look for sea surface temperatures outside of that ENSO zone to determine where high pressure will be, low pressure will be, the jet stream and our storm track, as well as October Siberian snow extent. The more snow you see during October in Siberia, the better chance for a colder and active pattern here in the Northeast. So this is our typical La Nina pattern. We see here in South Jersey, just getting a little bit into that warmer zone. When we're in a winter El Nino pattern, it looks to be, well, on the cooler side here, but no determination whether it's necessarily more active or not. Now, I'll step out for our ENSO state for what we have coming up now. We are neither in El Nino or La Nina. We are in ENSO neutral, and there's an 85% chance of that remaining as we go into the winter. So what does that mean? Well, we have to look towards other factors. If there were no other factors at play, this is pretty much our pattern. Jet stream very close to us. That would promote a lot of nor'easters. The jet stream is kind of like the storm track here, and we differentiate sometimes between the colder and the wet, but you can see active with cold shots. Now, as we look at our water temperatures across the globe at the beginning of November, we are looking at a couple of areas. No strong signal here. That's our ENSO zone. We see some oranges, we see some blues, but none of them are really dominating. What is dominating is this red blob here. That's in the Gulf of Alaska. Those are water that are above average. That means a more southerly to northerly jet stream, a more amplified pattern. We'll revisit that in a little bit. And offshore our waters into the East Coast, we have warmer than average temperatures and that keeps the shore warmer, but to the same extent, it does promote bigger storms, which could pull down colder air. We look at our snow cover, our October Siberian snow cover, where you're seeing the browns, that's our snow cover, pretty much all in Russia here, getting into Siberia. And as we look for that, the more snowpack you have, the longer the Arctic air can travel. So far, because of all the snow we have seen in Siberia and even into Canada and into the Rocky mountains it's supportive of long duration cold air journeys now this is our snowfall anomaly where you are seeing the purples that is above average where you're seeing the reds as below average a couple of purples here in siberia and as we look into canada a lot of places above average even into the rocky mountains what that tells us is that even if the cold air doesn't originate from siberia let's say it originates in the hudson bay over in canada well that means it can still sustain a cold air journey by the time it gets into South Jersey. Now, when we get to the week's time period, that one or two weeks out, we're looking at things like the North Atlantic Oscillation. That's the pressure difference between what's going on in Greenland and then out over the Azores. A positive NAO, you have more of a west to east flow. That's when you have lower pressures out near Greenland or Iceland, higher pressures out near the Azores. When it's the reverse, well, then you start to see 
more of a blocking pattern we call it, where storms can slow down and when we have that then we can promote big storm potential so let's get into it what are we going to see for our winter here well this is what i believe is to be the general setup this is our temperature anomalies and we have south jersey starred in yellow here big high pressure system out over the gulf of alaska the warmer air likes that high pressure system we have another high just about north of the equator here and we have another high pressure that's likely going to set up somewhere just to the east of the hudson bay this is important and we'll show you why here's our jet stream it's going to go in between these two high pressures this is a subtropical jet we also have our arctic jet stream which is going to ride over that warm blob there in the pacific and then they're going to meet here let's take a zoom up into the united states south jersey is starred in yellow here here's our subtropical jet it brings the moisture here is our arctic jet that brings the cold air look where they most likely form somewhere in the mid south or the deep south and then that means storm tracks could go something like this now not every storm is going to be this way but storm track passes pretty close to south jersey that keeps us active for the winter again it's not going to be like this every day of our winter but this is the general setup here and it does look to have more of a turn to the north now why did we have our south jersey snow specials last year well if we go back to this again what was happening was they didn't really make that turn to the north they kind of just slid just straight east out over the carolinas and we were just on that northern edge you want that turn to the north if you want the bigger snows here so accuweather which is a partner with the press shows that stormy for much of the northeast including south jersey here and that's pretty much my thoughts here it's looking to be a cooler than average or at least cooler than where we have been in a stormier pattern here we have short cold shots in november we have already seen that and we will continue to see that into november now december looks to see more persistent below average temperatures could we sneak a nor'easter in there a classic nor'easter with snow or at least we're pretty close to the rain snow line very possible snowiest periods look to be january and february that's nothing new for us that's typically our snowiest period and then for those of you who don't like the snow maybe some good news marsh looks to be more spring-like than wintry here in south jersey however remember it is more than just the snow coastal flooding is a big problem for us here especially during nor during nor'easter season and beach erosion we already had a lot of beach erosion during the early part of october we can continue to see that with these storms here and who remembers march of 2018 our four easter we had back to back to back to back nor'easters many high tides were in moderate flood stage and that brought a lot of damage along the shores in south jersey so thank you everybody for watching for the latest in south jersey weather again you can follow me on social media and of course we'll be keeping you updated on our website at thepressofac.com slash weather